For this exercise, I have four um, approaches to masking, and I've chosen the very exciting letter K as my subject. I've drawn the drawing in pencil, and you can either use pencil, I would use it fairly lightly, I had to do it dark enough for you to see it here, or perhaps an alcohol ink marker, and that might blend in a little bit better. The four projects that we have are masking the entire letter. So one approach to masking is you can just mask the whole subject that you want. Another approach is to mask only the outline and we would use this to mask a drawing or any time that you want some of the background to come into the letter. This third approach will be to mask around the letter and leave the center part white. And This has never been a successful technique for me but that doesn't mean it might not work better for you. I think I'm just not tidy enough to do it correctly. This last one is masking over a layer of ink and I've um, previously poured some ink on top of this letter and I'm letting it dry. And this is an interesting approach. You can um, tone paper this way or um, allow for two different um, intensities of ink. The masking fluid when it comes off will pull off a small layer of this ink but that may be just fine. So I'll begin by masking this first K up here. And you want to uh, be careful not to miss any spots. That was a pretty big blob there. Spread it out a little bit. There's no problem with it being a big blob. Uh, it just might take longer to dry. So for the second one, I'm going to mask just right over the line. And I'm going to make sure this time that I don't have too much masking fluid on the brush. I use this approach probably most often when I use masking because I often do not want to mask an entire object. It's very hard to integrate um, the masking back into a fluid inky flow on a, on a background. So the, I think the less masking you use, the better. It's just a very helpful tool for finding a drawing. I think we noticed in the lifting, it was, it was difficult. So this is the one we're going to mask around it. And I'll have to go probably pretty far around it because uh, when I go to ink the letter, I have found in the past that the ink kind of likes to jump my little barrier that I've made. I'm going to make sure that these dots are covered. I can't really tell. All right, this K looks um, looks dry enough to go ahead and put the masking fluid on top of it. The masking fluid I have on this one is, is definitely pretty thick. Same with this one. Well, and that one. So it'll it'll probably I'll probably give it at least a half an hour. Uh, masking is sometimes I'll mask a whole pile of pieces and then wait like a day or something. I have not had any problem ever getting the masking fluid off even after well years. All right. 
there we go. It's been a little while and it looks like our masking fluid is dry. You can kind of um, just look at the sheen of it to see whether it's dry or maybe an area that's not um, as important you can kind of touch, but this looks pretty good. The point of masking is to um, protect the paper when you add more ink over it. So we'll do that now. This is the botanical and I'm going to use the uh, drop and guide method to drop ink over um, these two. So here's the one we've, there we go. For the one that I masked around, I want the ink to be on the letter itself, and I don't want the ink going everywhere, so I'm going to put it in the weld palette first, and then brush it in. But I'll brush it in um, pretty thickly, so that we get a nice vibrant um, letter. For the one that we um, inked first, put the masking fluid over, I'm going to actually use the cotton ball and some alcohol. And I'll take off some of the ink so that in theory we should get a darker K with a kind of a lighter background. We'll need to let these dry um, before we pull the masking fluid off. To take off the masking fluid, um, you just simply run your finger over the masking fluid and it should come off. I don't think it's going to come off with these gloves on, so I'm going to take those off. So this is the one that we masked the entire letter. And find a place to get it started. There we go. I'm just kind of rubbing Blew it off. Ah, I guess it already wants to come on this one. All right, this is the one that we masked around the letter. I'm trying to make sure I got all the masking off. Do the one on the top, just, just the line. And we'll do the one where we left the ink on the, already on the paper. So here are our four um, experiments with masking. And we can see on this very first one, we have a very nice thick ink layer and we've got um, a white K. The edges are quite irregular and unless you're very, very tidy, that's kind of how they look like. On this one, we can still see the pencil line. Actually, we can probably see it on this one too, but we have um, far less of the K is white. This is the one where we went around it. And again, the big thing I noticed is just how irregular these edges are. This effect came out pretty well. Um, the K is definitely darker than our background. And um, on all of these, we're really seeing quite a bit of the pencil line. So the next step when we mask is that somehow we need to blend that masking back in and clean up these edges. And that um, can be done with a cotton swab or if you're um, doing a cleanup, you might want to just take a a pen and, and draw the edges in. 
With the lifting, we did projects such as the dragonfly and the fern, where we actually made paintings and left it alone just as a lifting technique. Due to the um, messiness of the masking technique, uh, we won't be doing that because I don't think we'd get very many satisfactory results. It might be possible if you were doing something like a spider web or uh, Queen Anne's lace or something that um, really had small um, defined areas of whites that it might look okay. But for the most part, we'll use our masking just as an intermediate step to either preserve the whites, preserve an outline, or um, use a toned paper. <laughs>